Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, thank you so much for tuning in and we are back playing this team that we kicked off with earlier in the week which is on your screen right in front of you now. As always the team is down in the description below, there is a Poker Pace and a Roll Pace. Try it out, take it away, do what you want with it. If you do try it out though I'm sure you will have a lot of fun and let me know how you get on with it if you do try it out. If you've missed any of the matches up so far this week and you'd like to catch up with them before coming into today's episode as always I'll put a card up there for you You can go back check those out and then come into today's episode check out the progress of the team so far We've had some incredible games this week so hopefully it continues on this week and we've not seen as much of the Mega Manetric as I would have liked so hopefully today and tomorrow before we wrap up going into the weekend we'll be able to see a little bit more of that but without further ado let's jump into today's episode music is on we're all set ready to go so hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent. I feel like I can't get my words out. What's wrong with me? Let's pick some music. Let's click into uh, Elite Four. Elite Four, that's a good, always a good one to kick us off with today. If you ever have any requests for music that you'd like to see played, if you've got a particular favourite one that I don't really play very often, do let me know in the comment section. I will make sure to feature it on our future episodes, probably next week, because I'm pre-recording these, which I'm going to have to try and do a little bit more of now with uh, Little Thea in our lives and uh, <laughs> creating manic for us all the time but it's absolutely it's been amazing she's doing really well and like I say I do want to try and get her on the channel maybe a stream one night I'll get her on and uh, we can we can uh, she can press some buttons for us and probably play Pokemon a lot better than us I'm really hoping she likes Pokemon it's one of those things that I'm really conscious of because I love the franchise so much so there's Pokemon stuff around the house everywhere there's my trophies and things like that and other memorabilia that I've collected over the years but it's one thing that I don't want to push onto her because I feel if I push it onto her and I force it I feel like she might kick back with it so I really want her to discover it herself and then fall in love with it like hopefully I did and that would be amazing wouldn't it and that's how we all want it to be but we've got our first opponent of the episode so we'll hop straight into team preview my opponent already locked in got a lot to catching up to do so our first opponent today running a team of Salamence, Kyogre, Bronzong, Tapakoko, Gengar and Groudon. So we've got the dual primal combination, we've got the double mega. Uh, I think uh, we've already played this opponent already this week maybe. Uh, or did I play this opponent in testing? I don't know. But the dual primals there, we've got the speed control with the Bronzong and then the trick room there. And then the tailwind on Salamence. Going to have the Gengar there. We can check that with the Tapu Lele, which I think we did previously. So I do want to bring the Lele again. Um, Lunala still a very good pick I feel because we can check the Gengar um, we definitely want to run Kyogre and I think again we'll go with Hydreigon, Hydreigon's really good here um, just Cortana could be just as useful but I think because of the Gengar uh, the Hydreigon's really useful so we'll bring Hydreigon and I think we'll click in with these and we'll get straight into our first one today so good luck to my opponent and um yeah, I'm pretty sure this was like Monday's opponent. I'm pretty sure. So, we'll see. But it would be amazing. Like, I'm talking about Thea. Um, she's a long way off playing Pokemon yet. But, I mean, when she gets to like 5, 6, hopefully she does enjoy it. And it would be amazing at that point to start taking her to events and see how she does. If she like, if she wants to compete, she might like the card game. <laughs> and then I'll be lost. I'll be like, I'll be calling on all of you guys for help with that. Um, so, we'll see. Uh, okay, my opponent leading out with Gengar and the Tapu Koko. Again, we can set up our Tailwind um, and Psychic into the Gengar, which we'll, we'll deal with it. Uh, we've got to worry about, I think in the last game, there was the Electro Web that came out from the Tapu Koko. But we will just go for that Tailwind here um, again. And um, we'll probably see Electro Web, Gengar protect. It might not protect this turn, thinking that we're going to call the double bluff and say, oh, well, we'll attack into the Koko because we know the protect's coming out there, but we don't want to leave that Gengar alone. We don't want to get punished for not uh, attacking into it, which we are going to just see it protect here. And we'll see what this Koko decides to go for. After our Psychic, um, and there's the Electro Web. So exactly the same turn playing out as the previous game, which I don't mind. Um... Yeah, and I think one of the things that we have to, we could do now is just double tap that Coco because I expect the Gengar to switch out now. Um, so if we just Psychic and Moon Guys Beam, and I think that puts us in a bit of a better position because one of the things we have to worry about is, I mean, the Coco could protect here. 
the Gengar does switch out. We're not getting that damage initially onto the Kyogre like we wanted to, uh, that we got in the last game. But getting rid of the Korkor, preventing it from going for that Electro Web again is the big thing here. Um, now, it could protect, like I've said, um, but if it does, then it leaves the door open for us to do that the next turn. And we can switch out now, which we couldn't do previously. So, um, let's see what we, we decide to do. There's a protect. It's a little bit of a shame. When we could have got the the sidekick and the Moongeist beam into the Kyogre, which we did the last game where we got the knockout there. Um, now the car, the Coco's kind of left open. Does the Kyogre just protect here? That's the thing. Because um, what could we bring in? We could bring in our own Kyogre. I mean, having our own Kyogre isn't the, the worst thing. Um, I just don't want to leave the Kyogre unchecked. Um, so I could psychic the Coco and go for the Z move into the Kyogre. Yeah, I think that's not a bad play. The only problem doing this is we kind of oh the Coco is switching out. Okay, what we're we gonna see? Gengar come in. Excellent. All right, and this works out perfectly. I mean, one of the things that I was worried about probably more than anything was the Gengar dealing with that later on in this match. So we are able to actually snipe that, which is pretty good. The Coco is still going to be a bit of an issue to deal with, but we are going to get the Z-Move now. And uh, you have to remember that uh, the Z-Moves are copyright blocked, so I have to make a little cutscene, which we'll do as soon as we see the pretty face of Lunala here. So we'll be right back when the Z-Move And when we do make target into the Kyogre, how much damage can we do? Oof, I don't think we would have picked up the KO the last turn, you know. Uh, Lele avoids... Oh, that is heartbreaking for my opponent there. That is really heartbreaking. Uh, we do, they do miss the Origin Pulse, and this is one of the issues with Origin Pulse with Precipice Blades. Um, so many times, like it just really costs you. Um, oh, it's so frustrating for my opponent. It really is. Uh, okay, let's go for Psychic into Coco, and oh, do we switch out Lele because Lele could be quite useful a late game. Um, just I think the, the the Coco protects here. I really do. I'm gonna try and preserve Lele for later. I'm gonna I just expect could I'm gonna actually bring in Hydreigon, yeah, and I'm gonna attack Psy Shock into into the Kyogre. The Coco might protect, it might not. Um the Kyogre will probably protect. Like I expect a double protect here because they've lowered our speeds. This is what I would think. There's a protect from the Coco. Does the Kyogre protect? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, we get Kydragon in now, and we've got access to this Earth Power, so we can we can nuke the the Coco this next turn. Even if they've got Dazzling Gleam, we can definitely set another Tailwind up, which is going to help us out with this end game, especially if the Groudon's in the back for my opponent. So what we'll do is we will Earth Power, and we will go for that Tailwind again. I wonder if we'll see. We'll probably just see Origin Pulse, Electro Web again, I'd imagine. Lunala's going to be slower, more than likely, than the Kyogre, depending on the build of it. There's a Dazzling Gleam coming in. Uh, we'll take Hydreigon down to its Sash. We do survive, though. This is the handy thing about that Sash, just guaranteeing an attack off here. Hopefully, this picks up the knockout onto the Coco. Oh, it's so close. So close, Origin Pulse. Lunala should take this. Oh, just about and we'll get the tailwind up and then we can get our Lele back in and now I feel like we're in a, a really good place because I don't want to bring Kyogre in just yet because of the Groudon the threat of the Groudon coming in although what we could do is how close is that Kyogre to getting taken down hmm oh, the Lele would be hmm. yeah the Lele is better because we can then side shock sidekick yeah, and then keep Kyogre for later because Psyshock will get Kyogre from this range. Psychic gets the Coco, and we're kind of locking my opponent. They're kind, they're forced to kind of try and stall out this Tailwind, but I don't know if they're going to be able to do it, especially with the Groudon in the back. As long as we've got Kyogre to come in, we should be able to close this one up. So we will go for the Psychic into the the Coco, and the Psyshock into the Kyogre. Uh, I think the Origin Pulse miss earlier really did matter because if you get that, then you you pick up. 
the, the KO onto the Lunala anyway. Uh, we're not going to see the, the Kyogre protect. We're going to get the Psy Shock into this Kyogre, which should be enough now under the Psychic Terrain to pick up the knockout there. Um, and then the next turn, when the, the Groudon comes in, you definitely get the Koko, which opens the door for Kyogre to come in and just get the Scald KO onto the Groudon. If it is the last one, might not be. We're not seeing it yet, so we'll have to see. It is the Groudon. It is the Groudon. So, yeah, we should be fine, I think, to close this one up. Um, Psychic into the Coco, and we'll get a Moon Guys Beam into the Groudon. Even though we've got the Psychic Terrain up, Groudon's more physically, uh, defensively built than specially defensively built, so the Moon Guys will probably do just a little bit more Groudon than the Psy Shock. But I think regardless of that, it's not really going to matter. I think the one thing that I do keep falling back on with this team is definitely that um, White God would be more useful on Lunala, I think, than the Raw has been. Um, but then it makes me think, probably want to put your impulse on Minetric, so we've got a better way to deal with Boosted Xerneas than we currently have with Snarl, which isn't the most reliable. And maybe we could get rid of Hidden Power Water, because we just haven't used it. Hidden Power Water, put your impulse on, and that might give us a little bit more of an edge. Lunala actually avoids. See, so Presbus Blades, Orange Impulse, just the worst moves. Worst moves in history. Lele does get taken down, but now we do get the Kyogre in. We are in Tailwind. And I mean, this is the thing. Uh, talking about Wide Guard, if we're at this position now, where we've got Lunala on the field, we've got Kyogre in the reins up, and we've got Wide Guard, there's literally nothing Groudon can really do. I mean, if they've got Earth Power, then yeah, they can Earth Power us. They've got Dragon Claw or Thunderbolt or something like that, but they're really rarities. And I think this is what I tried to do in 2016 with my hit on top. Um, I tried to get board positions where I had Kyogre out on the field in front of a Groudon with the rain up and hit on top next to it with Wide Guard. And the Groudons, like most of the time, are just completely useless and can't really do very much. So um, we'll go for the Moongeist and the Skull should wrap it up, but we might see the forfeit come out here. Now we're just going to see my opponents playing it on like a champ, true champ. Um, but they haven't had very much luck with... Um, with the low accuracy attacks or lower accuracy attacks um, but this is one of the reasons why I went Scald on Kyogre because I do think the Y God on like an Origin Pulse Water Water Spout set you can get locked out and I just didn't want that and the added bonus of Scald with the burn there it's a single target as well it just makes it gives you that nice option and pretty much they're doing about the same damage anyway um, when you look at the damage of a double target origin pulse skull does about the same damage so you're not really missing out at all and it's just a bit more reliable so you're just not missing when you need to hit but we've locked in oh we haven't locked in sorry I'm sitting on that screen not locked in but we have locked in now so there's a skull and uh, we are able to pick up the knockout onto the ground on so Lunala doing some nice work there, dodging a lot of attacks though to stick around a lot longer than it probably should have, but um, we are able to pick up a win today, so that's a nice one, and um, then we did get a bit fortunate, I think, in both matches versus this trainer, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, but, nonetheless, we'll take the victory, as we always do, and we'll just hop straight over into our, to our main screen, then we can hop into our next match, and hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent, but um, I really hope you guys have been enjoying the run with this team this week. I know it's a little bit different from what you'd normally see, and um, I, I definitely am enjoying this team. I really do like it a lot. I think it makes a big difference at the start of the weekend, I was saying, when you're putting a team together and you just have that, that moment, like, clarity where it clicks, and it, I definitely have that with this. We've got uh, Lemoncello up next, which is a... An acquired taste of a drink, if you've ever had it, so we'll hop into our next game. Not the biggest fan of Lemoncello the drink, but I'm a big fan of Lemoncello the trainer, because he's rocking a really cool team, consisting of Serena, Lugia, Gengar, Incineroar, Kyogre, and Tapu Koko. So we're probably going to see the Lugia with the Z Tailwind to boost those critical hit chances. I would definitely say that's probably what we're going to see. And so we need to be a bit careful around that. Um... Is base 110 as well, so it's going to outspeed the majority of things on our team, except the Tapu Lele, but uh, I do want to bring Lunala, and I think just to, I'm a bit wary about the Gengar coming out, so just to check that, I do want to bring Lele, but at the same time, could bring Kyogre, because I do expect the Incineroar to come out, um, and then bring Lele along for the ride as well, and do we want Minetric? Minetric could be good, because... 
feel like Coco could be a bit of an issue. Um, the only reason I wouldn't... Mm, no, there isn't really much reason not to bring Manetric here. I mean, Cortana could be good. Uh, it's not going to appreciate the Lugia stuff, though, so Manetric's probably a better choice. And having it in the back, if the Coco does come out, we can kind of bait in an electric type attack onto Kyogre and maybe switch it in there. So we'll try this. And we'll go into this this first one, Lemoncello. Lemoncello. I always remember it's a German Nats in 20... Oh, yeah, was it 2015, I think, in Germany. And there was like me, Baz. There's a bunch of us uh, after the event sitting and we went to the local store to get some drinks because where Baz was staying with um, the Birch Brothers uh, they had a really nice hotel and there's this nice green at the back near the venue and uh, we got we ended up getting a bottle of this limoncello thinking it was going to be nice it was gross <laughs> like that's just my opinion I just can't drink it it's like too lemony too lemony um, but uh, I think uh, yeah I think we ended up just passing around the whole table it was such a good night a um, lot of old 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 players there which was really nice Good old days, good old national days, reflecting on those. We are going to see the Gengar and the Incineroar come up for my opponent. I think what we'll do here is, um, hmm. We might have to sack the Lele here. We might have to. I'm going to bring in the Lele and I'm going to go for the Water Spout. If my opponent decides to attack with the Gengar here, they will go into the Lele and they'll probably take it down, but it's a worthy sacrifice, I feel. To get the Gengar and the Incineroar with Kyogre in one fell swoop, I feel like I'll take that trade for Lele all day long. And if we get Lele in and the Gengar does protect, then it's fine. We put a lot of pressure on the next turn. We're checking the Incineroar as well. We're protecting the side of the field. So we'll go for that. So we'll see what my opponent decides to go for here. Lunala, switch out. And then there's Lele. So just to get around this fake out support. And I think even if we take a sludge bomb from the Gengar into the Kyogre slot, which I don't think we're likely to do, we should pick up the knockout into Incineroar. But we're not going to see that. We're going to see Incineroar switch out. We're going to see <sighs> Kyogre hit the field. I wonder if we'll just see a protect from the Gengar this turn to lock us in in this board position. Maybe. Maybe not, though. I don't know, because I feel like you can't... Gengar can't like reliably pick up the knockout with Shadow Ball onto Lunala through Shadow Shield so it may protect here which puts us in a better position going into the next turn for sure yeah so we'll get free water spout damage onto this Kyogre and then the Gengar's in a really tricky position going into this next turn and I think the Incineral comes in on the Gengar slot or something because I don't feel like they can keep the Gengar in I'm going to Psychic into the Kyogre and I'm just going to Water Spout again. I think we're putting on enough pressure here to kind of just keep clicking the Water Spout button. But make a little predict where the Gengar switches out. Because I think you expect maybe the, the Scarf here from the Lele rather than keep the Gengar in. And if the Gengar does stay in and attack, I'll use Lele. But I think you switch out to something maybe like Lugia. Although you might be pinned into a position. This is where we might have went wrong. You might be pinned in to a position where you think, oh, I can't switch out into anything to take an attack. So uh, I've just got to just got to take. I've just got to leave the Gengar in and maybe rely on me making a mistake like I'm doing now. Maybe not a mistake, but maybe making a predict where you can get a bit of an advantage. But we're not going to see that. We're going to see the Gengar switch out. And sooner I hit the field. This will mean we are going to be able to take down this Kyogre. Hopefully a Psychic in the terrain should be enough to take down this Kyogre from here. I know if we had Psy Shock, we'd definitely be able to. Just whether or not oh, the Kyogre just protects. But we will be able to get the Incineroar now. Um, which likely brings the Gengar back in. And uh, what's about? And this is what I mean about like making that predict pin my opponent. It could have went wrong. could have went wrong if the Gengar had stayed in. But then if it stays in and attacks the Lele and you protect the Kyogre still then you're going down to a water spout so again we get a good trade off there like I would trade Tapu Lele for Gengar any any time like just to get rid of the Gengar it frees up Lunala so much in this match Tapu Koko gonna hit the field now um hmm this is that interesting position where we could go for the Minetric switch in the lightning rod and just water spout again we talked about earlier and I think I'm gonna do that I'm gonna bring in Minetric and just water spout. Hopefully with a faster Kyogre. I don't know if we are. 
my opponent have a trick room option? I don't think they did. So let's see. Hopefully the couple goes for like a Z move or a Thunderbolt. That would be ideal if they do Thunder, yeah. Lightning Rod coming in, super clutch there. We might lose Minetric now to an Origin Pulse or Water Spout. Scald, where are you going? Into Minetric? Nice, we get another Water Spout, that's fine. Because we'll take the Coco down now. Minetric doing its job. And we'll get the, the Lele back onto the field with its Psychic Terrain to deal with that Gengar. Um, the, the opposing Kyogre is not really too much of a threat now. Uh, Skull shouldn't take down a Lele. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty much wrapped up from here on out. So that's that's pretty good. But it's just about keeping control of the field, really, more than anything, I think. And um, utilizing Kyogre like we have done. And like Lele is so useful. Like my opponent's got this, a similar sort of thing with the Serena on their side of the field, but they've opted not to bring it this game. Um, yeah, we'll just. Do we just. Yeah, we'll go for the Gengar. I don't want to get punished for doing this. Um, and we should take a Scald from um, the opposing Kyogre. Like, we could be cheeky and go for the Psychic into the Kyogre here, which we probably should have done. But it's just like if we do that and then the Gengar gets a Shadow Ball into our Lele. Um, well, if they do that, then yeah. I think the Psychic into the, the Kyogre is a better shout. Oh, because that, that happens. Yeah. Because if we've done that, we take down the Kyogre. If the Gengar does attack, then they take a Water Spark. So, in hindsight, really, the more reliable play there would have been um, the Psychic, the Kyogre, Water Spark into the Gengar. Um, but, as it stands, we're, we're alright. And we can take our foot off the gas a little bit because we still got Kyogre on the field. we still got Lunala in the back. Lunala can come in um, and just pick up the knockout now with Psy Shock or... Moonguys Beam and Kyogre can do water spout stuff, so it should still be fine. And I think when you've got these options open, you're not so worried. You're not so worried. So we'll just Moonguys Beam. Don't need to Z move. Don't need to add any extra cutscenes to this video already. Save some work for myself. Taking his time, weighing up his options. I wonder what he's got. Hmm. And the forfeit comes out. No options. So very good game to Lemoncello. Great username. Brings back lots of nice fond memories and uh, a really nice game for us to end up with today. So we'll call it a day there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. And uh, we'll be back to wrap up with this team tomorrow um, before we make maybe some changes going into next week. Well, we'll definitely make changes going into next week. But uh, if you've got any suggestions, as, as always, just keep them coming. And uh, I'll see you for the next one. So have a great day. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you for that next episode tomorrow. So until then, take care and bye-bye.